I believe that at its core, <clears throat> narcissistic abuse and abuse of any type, abuse is, is the failure on the part of the abuser to recognize the victim's rights, to acknowledge the victim's rights, and to blatantly, with joy, and with a sense of glee, forcibly violate the natural rights of whoever that victim may be. And it's always the nearest and dearest. The most wicked among us don't abuse somebody, well, very rarely. I mean, there are cases such as human trafficking. This is not the case. But in the majority of cases, we all know the narc violates the natural rights the human rights, in many cases, the civil rights of those closest to him, his children, his wife, which is despicable. Co-worker, parents, I was reading this just a few minutes ago concerning natural rights. This is the rights that each and every one of us, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, skin color, gender, every one of us have been endowed with these rights. And they were given to us by our Creator. Not by any magistrate. These natural rights that I possess were not given to me as a gift from mom or dad or from my benevolent husband or wife or from my child or from my sibling or from my government. These rights, these natural rights, were given to me, granted to me by God. The supreme, the top, the very top of perfection, the top of the food chain, if you will, This is what Thomas Paine wrote from his writing, The Rights of Man. Natural rights are those which appertain to man in right of his existence. Of this kind are all the intellectual rights or rights of the mind. You have a right to a sound mind. And also all those rights of acting as an individual for his own comfort and happiness. Which are not injurious to the natural rights of others. The rights of acting as an individual for his own comfort, for his own happiness, Sounds very much like what Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence. We have the right to pursue life. The individual does. Each individual has the right to pursue life, liberty, happiness, and prosperity. And 
and then in, in particular, the religious covert narc will attempt in a myriad of ways. I think his favorite is to pretend he's a good, devout Christian to convince you that somehow or other you don't have these inalienable, natural, God-given rights to pursue your own comfort, to pursue your own happiness, to pursue your own prosperity as an individual. There's a doctrine that's prevalent in so many churches now in which the wife is to submit to the husband. Even at the cost of her own happiness, the cost of her own prosperity, in some cases, the cost of her own life. That is damnable. That is heresy. That did not come from God. That came from the pit. If the man is a true husband who cherishes and, and honors and loves his wife, why wouldn't you submit to him? If the parent is a true parent who has the best interest for the child, who devotes himself or herself to the child, why wouldn't the child submit? But the parent or the husband, or in some cases the wife, who refuses to acknowledge any natural individual rights of the child, any natural rights of the spouse, they, they are no longer a husband or parent. They forfeited that privilege and right. You don't have to submit to them. Because believe, if you don't go to, if you're not involved with church, you may find this hard to believe, but there is a doctrine going around saying div divorce for no reason, even if the husband is, is beating the hell out of his wife, she is to stay in the marriage. Total loss of individuality. That's cult. <sighs> oh, where's this other quote? And I will stop after I find this, if I can find it. Eh, I can't find it, but I'll read this to you from Thomas Jefferson. It's pretty good. Thomas Jefferson wrote this in Rights of British America. A free people claim their rights as derived from the laws of nature and not as the gift of their chief magistrate. And I think you could fill in that term chief magistrate with parent or even pastor or husband. A free people claim their rights as derived from the laws of nature and not as a gift of their parents or a gift of their spouse. When you when I, when we go no contact with people who not only refuse to recognize our rights, but systematically work to violate our rights, um, 
you're, you're exercising your right when you go no contact. You're exercising a legitimate right. A, rea- a, a right based in reality, not fantasy. You're exercising a right when you go no contact from your abuser, a right that's based on truth. And it is my prayer that these philosophical things I've uh, spouting forth, uh, that they uh, that they begin to impact us in our hearts and minds. Thank you.